Hi, this is Rachel from the Dotting Center. In today's video, I'd like to share a recent dot mandala piece and offer up a bonus challenge for you all. Today, we'll dot a wood pebble with a palette inspired by fabric from a sundress of mine. Yes, you heard me right. I flat out stole slash borrowed a color palette from one of my own dresses. Trust me, she won't mind. Let me explain this through a video short that I made showing the whole color picking process. Check it out. Color palette inspiration can come from anywhere, and in this case, it was my sundress. Let's get to work. Using my handy paint swatch book, I will nerdily go through each one of my paint swatches and match the colors to my sundress. First one was easy, check out that match. Deco Art Scarlet. Okay, so now let's check this one out. Fire Coral, how cool is that? Perfect match. This time Folk Art wins. So I think you see the whole idea here, right? This is what makes this so much fun, is what you end up doing is picking paints that you would never usually pick to go together. It kind of opens you up to new palettes and new brands. I just loved this and I hope that you try it out for yourself. Go to your closet, pick some fabric, and build a palette. So now with the fabric and the palette already figured out, I just went to my ready to paint stuff drawer and picked out this cute little wood pebble. It's already been primed. It's got a nice wood stain on the back. That's gonna be perfect. So the first step is always to divide the surface into sections. This one is the 510 divider and it's flexible and transparent so you can see exactly if you have perfect center which this one looks good everything checks out. So then you just draw out all of the divider lines. The next step in the process is to take your compass and draw out a few concentric circles from the center of your pebble. This will just give you some points of reference so that your rows are nice and aligned. Then once all the lines have been drawn, you just take your hand and dust off any of the excess chalk powder. That'll give you a nice smooth surface so that your paint will apply evenly. Now for the very first dot, I like to take my time and just really enjoy the process of making that first dot. I usually will load it up with a lot of paint and then let it dry so it has this nice round Skittles-like look to it. There have been projects that I've started where I've redone that center dot uh, several times until I got it just right. And I think that it will start your project off really well if you can get that center dot where you want it and have it dry. A lot of times this first row of dots, these tiny dots surrounding the center dot, those take the most hand control and precision. And if you mess up those dots and your paint in your center dot is not dry, it will give you problems if you need to go through and remove those dots. So what I do, and I think a lot of mandala artists do this, is they just let that center dot dry all the way completely. That way if there are any mess ups within these first few rows, you can easily wash off those few rows of paint without having to redo the center dot. So for this design, I sketched out a tentative plan in my sketchbook and I decided to use brighter, lighter colors in the center and then transition into the darker olive green colors towards the end. Here is where I switch to that really exciting scarlet colored paint. This is really not a color that I would normally use because it's, it leans towards the orange and if you're I'm kind of weird about orange but I'm deciding to embrace it and I really was excited about using this color. So I wanted to highlight these dots by using uh, a silicone tool and surrounding each one of these dots with tiny white dots. This just kind of 
pops them out and get, adds like a little lacy border to the edge and um, sets them apart in a sort of way. So hopefully you are going to take on this challenge and go find some fabric in your house or an album cover or a book cover, something that has colors that you wouldn't normally use and build a palette, paint with those colors. So you wouldn't believe how different it feels to paint with paint colors that you wouldn't have picked had you had the chance. So none of these colors would be colors that I would have picked to go together. But the dress proved that yes, the palette works. So I just had to see if it could transfer to paint and it totally did. It made me think in a different way. Another thing that it does is it makes you look at everything around you in a new way. You start to pay attention to things like album covers and book covers and, you know, looking at your clothes in a different way, um, cereal boxes, children's books, like there are color palettes all around you and it's just kind of exciting to see things in a fresh way and just kind of, you know, borrow it if you like. Okay, so here what I'm doing is I'm kind of bulking up those orange dots with some extra paint. And this is going to pop those dots up and out so that they have nice rounded, a nice rounded surface. And this is kind of the close up of it. You can see you can really, as long as the, uh, the outer edge is good, you can add paint to the center of the dot like that. Just keep adding paint and it will bulk up without shifting if the consistency is right. So this video isn't obviously a step-by-step -step tutorial. For those, I take my time and I go super slow and I would pick something a little bit uh, more beginner friendly. But this one, I really just wanted to show you the process of how to build something using a color palette that you harvested from real life. If you think you can, you want to try this, please let me know in the comments and let me know what item you're going to borrow from. So it was at this point that I decided to break from my sketchbook version and go kind of go rogue and do something a little bit different. So this border around the outside is something that I don't normally do, that negative space that I'm just allowing. Usually my tendency is just fill up every square inch of whatever I'm painting with dots, but I am purposefully showing restraint here and leaving that little tiny area of black sh to show up. And then I'm going to work on the sides and do something completely different. All right, so if you've been following my channel, you know that I just made these stencils uh, that are just blowing my mind. These are shape stencils and they come in a pack of six different shapes. This is the petal shape. Now what these stencils help with is when there are shapes that you want to make that you need to be symmetrical and that you need to be exactly the same over and over again. So I can't freehand this shape exactly perfect as well as I can use a stencil. And I love stencils because they are, they're just gonna be right on every time. This is transparent too, so you can design on the fly. You can see what this, this shape is going to look like before you actually draw it on your piece. So you line up the endpoints and the center bridge with your, uh, your guidelines and you're good to go. And then you just have these perfectly symmetrical shapes that you can then, um, you know, here I am using a wet cotton swab to just take out some of the lines that I don't need. 
These are just super helpful and they work on small objects all the way up to big, huge, large canvases. I've used these on 36 inch canvases. They still work. So here, what this is, is basically like a prompt, right? So I have this petal shape. Well, how do you fill it with dots, right? So what I've decided to do is make a big plump dot right in the, on the end of this shape and then follow the outline so that it has a nice point. And now I'm going to take my stylus and just follow the center line of that guideline all the way up. It just gives me this shape that I would not normally draw or paint because I had that stencil shape as a prompt. So here's that process again. And what you wanna do is use enough paint. The more that you have to stretch and pull that paint with your tools, the more paint you're gonna need. So now to fill those leaf shapes, I'm going to use a gradient of that green. So I'm starting with the dark green in the center and then I'm going to lighten that color up as I move out from the center. I'm just using some yellow and some white to really get a nice kind of a light green color. So this is why I like using uh, the stencil as prompt because this, the, looking at the lines, what I'm going to do is take that lighter green color and create two little triangular shapes. Normally I don't paint with triangles, but I thought it kind of it worked the way those two shapes overlapped. And so I tried it and I do, I like that shape. And you can see, you can really drag that paint in any direction that you'd like. So now we're going to mix another lighter green color using yellow and that lightest green that we just mixed and just keep adding swooshes alongside of those shapes and build out that petal so it looks like a green leaf. Okay, so back to uh, back to the scheduled program here. Um, so what I'm doing is I have decided to take the warm uh, orange tone colors and create a little uh, fan-like shape down in those rounded shapes and just make a gradient using uh, the oranges and the rust color and have little unfolding fan-like petals extending out. I really like how I kept the dots on the top and then kept only the swooshes along the sides. I think that ended up looking pretty cool. And now we're at the end. We're doing all of the final top dots and edge shapes. And to finish off this little, uh, this little edge, I decided to add some gold dots just along the bottom to help to blend that shape in with the wood. I think it's a nice little transition area. And then underneath the green petal shapes, I just added a few swooshes, really thick ones. I wanted those to really pop out. Yeah, I like how that looked. So the very last step is just to wipe off all of the chalk lines and then you are ready to go. You can varnish it or just leave it as is. That paint is so thick, it's not going nowhere. So here's the final piece and hey look, it totally matches my dress. How'd that happen? I don't know. Total coincidence. So I hope you liked this video and I hope I can challenge you to 
steal slash borrow some colors from your clothes. Well, that's something I never thought I'd say. If you have a second, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. More videos to come. Is this working? Are you hypnotized yet? You can always visit me over at thedottingcenter.com for all of your dot art supply needs. I hope you have just the best day today, and I will see you next week with another video. Bye, guys.